I just want to say that I have prepared a small book in the description below that uh, has all the position change marks, all the position notes, you know, all the position change, all the position notes marks for the elbow. And with the rules that you're going to learn in this video, you can go back to that book and you can understand better why I chose uh, exactly those notes for position and changes. Okay? And probably at the end of the video, I will spend some time and I will simply uh, play slowly through all the examples from my book so you have an idea of how it looks like uh, when, I, when you play your position change, when you play your elbow movements. Okay, um, now I think we can start our lesson. Let's go. Elbow movements help the wrist stay flexible and free, improving your technique and tone. Now, in playing, we always have different positions, and sometimes they're quite visible, like for example in these videos, three positions. But sometimes they are hidden, and we would simply stretch our hand to reach the notes, and that stretch will gradually start accumulating tension in hands. For example, here. Simply play this way. Yeah, not really nice because this creates tension in my palm. So what we could do instead, we could find position changes in this pattern and move our elbow, and it would look this way. And as you can see, my wrist, my palm, my hand stay in a natural closed position. Instead of so that's the trick. And in large jumps, if we're not engaging elbow in the right way, it will also bring stiffness to hands, affecting accuracy with lips, bring more tension to body, to hands. Um okay, so let me give you again some examples. Now we have this pattern. <laughs> very common. So if we have no idea what the elbow is doing, we're probably uh, gonna end up playing something like this. Having so much tension, carrying so much stiffness here, especially if you know we have to also control the tone so nothing would sound too loud or too soft. It just looks up everything. Now, how we can fix it is by moving elbow first, preparing the next position, and then let elbow lead the rest of the hand. So when we play, so if we're just playing elbows, I'm not making <laughs> it anyhow musical, I'm sorry guys. What is this? So when we go faster, okay. it's kind of elbow already there, so that's why it's so easy and I'm going faster, you know. So it's very, very flexible instead of this. Always remember, move your elbow with a big amplitude, no matter how small the interval is. So when we come back again to this revolutionary idiot, and we need to move our elbow over here for this position. Even though it's kind of, there's like third, I mean, it's not really a big shift. But instead of moving your elbow just a bit, make a full movement, don't be afraid. Next, when you move your elbow, make sure you don't turn it back. So you, you don't make this, you know, chicken dance. <laughs> um, it's only one stroke, as you can see. So when you play faster, you simply, f it looks like this, you know. Like one movement. It's the same, you know, in scales. You're, oh, you don't play scales, you move and then you come back. You move and then you come back. So you don't play scales this way. You 
play scales, you move and you stay there. You move and you stay there. Like this. Um, all right, um, now, when you move, let's talk about how to actually move. So when you make a move, make it with a smooth, light and quick motion. So don't make it slow. Don't make it fast but forced, you know. <laughs> But, uh, you know, when your hand is, of course, free and relaxed, it's gonna happen naturally. Just quick, but very flexible, very beautiful, smooth. Like this. Actually, I cannot hear anything when I'm playing because there is no sound for me. So I hope I'm playing it, like, <laughs> nicely still. <laughs> um, all right. Okay, the last tip. Get it uh, crystal clear for you. Um, what are you doing in your sensations? You know, focus focus your attention on the point of your of your elbow and always move it first. So sometimes I even ask my students to hold it and just push it or pull it again gently without any force. So you know exactly. You know you feel this point. You feel this point very clear in your sensations. I guess that's about it. Now, arrange fingering to reduce position changes to minimum. And if you see written underscore fingering, that would change your hand's position where you could easily play, for example, everything in one position, then you should correct them and use more efficient fingering. Like, for example, here. So, look at this. This is obvious in one position. For some reason, it's written for one and then four. So instead of one position, now we have two positions, which is not really nice. Uh, maybe those fingerings are written for some musical purposes, but again, it could be easily done using phrasing or articulations, intonation, the, the musical means of expression, but not the technical thing. So instead of playing this, play just this. And on the second line, again, you can see, okay, this is one position, okay, but now here. This is definitely one position, but uh, it's written so again maybe for the reason to play it more evenly. I don't know, but again you can uh, you know achieve it through better intonation, second and third, but still keep your hand in one position. So instead of playing this. Now, to make this stage very clear for you to understand, in this video I will mark with colored blocks each position in the score, just like this. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and give you a few rules that will guide you in finding positions. So the general rule is, move your elbow the last note of a current position. Um, so, like this. Now, there also could be variants of moving the elbow on the last but one note of a current position. And on the first note of the next position, or on the second note of the next position. And um, it happens when you start choosing position change notes to minimize possible clumsiness when you feel while well, making elbow motion. For instance, uh, choosing the note for position change with similar wrist and elbow motion will definitely ease your play. So, for example, you have again this etude. <laughs> you have this position. So you could move on the last note here. But you see, this note is going to the right with wrist movement. So if you're gonna make, you know, this small note, the wrist to the right and elbow to the left, that's I'm gonna feel comfortable. So <laughs> you have to choose the one that aligns with your wrist. So wrist to the left here, elbow to the left here, perfect. Now, choosing the downbeat note, even if it's contour wrist elbow motion, is also very good. So, I got many examples for this. Um, all right, so let's take a look at the musical moment. So the first here, well, I've written it on the second note because I think you still can do this because it's such a big leap here, but of course you could also move here, but let's just ignore it. I'll talk about this later. 
So, look at this. Again, you could simply go with the last note in this position. I mean, why not? It goes to the left with the wrist, it goes to the left with the elbow. Perfect. But this note is so, so upbeat that when you're gonna play in the fast tempo, you know, when we're playing with fast tempo, we always have some impulse, kind of. We always feel some impulse on downbeats. And, um, you know, relative downbeats here, I would say. So you better con connect your elbow movement to that impulse because otherwise it will be very, very hard to control it in the fast tempo. So, so if you go in fast tempo and you need to move it very quickly on this note, it's either gonna, you know, like row, be loud, too loud, and it also will create more tension, you know, you better don't do anything with your elbow than this. So you see. And, you know, catch it. Now, when you connect to the downbeat, even though the wrist goes to the right, you move your elbow to the left here, and it will be very comfortable. It will feel, you know, more stable. I think it all about, it's all about this. <laughs> so you feel more stable. So if you go fast, you simply know G, D. So it's kind of easy. Now, um, let's just come back here for a second. Again, coming back to downbeat. Of course, I could move here uh, because it's downbeat. It feels more stable, more secure. I could move my wrist uh, left and move my elbow to the right, no matter what. Um, and you probably could do this too. But I was a little bit concerned that if I move here. I don't know, can I stretch it then here? Because for me, maybe this is better. If my hand is not really wide, I can, you know, sacrifice and just move it on upbeat, but it will feel maybe a little bit easier. But it's really up to you. You can move it here. But I don't know, it doesn't feel good. You know, you can always, you see, you can always check, even if you have some variety, you just play in different tempos, usually in fast tempo, and you just feel what feels more natural in a way, you know, more fluent for you. Okay, let's just continue with example. So, this, you know, couple of bars. On every, you know, relative downbeat, I move my elbow. Again, you see, I'm not moving here or here because it's just the last note of a position. Because if you play faster, it's really hard to catch. But if you move here and here, it's very easy. So let's just go and check. Similar motion, similar motion, similar motion. Perfect. They even match with similar motion. Sometimes you will you will have this you know perfect situation where not only you choose a downbeat that, but downbeat is not even contrary motion. Downbeat is also similar motion. Wrist elbow similar motion. So it's just mwah, smooth. <laughs> um, the next one. Okay. So again, the relative upbeat downbeat is gonna be here, here. Basically every three notes. So here we have contrary motion though, but again, wrist to the right, elbow to the left. Wrist to the left, elbow gently to the right. Okay, when you play faster, look what's gonna happen. You just speed up and eventually you get kind of some raw loop over here. But it's not exactly what you do in a slow tempo, you know, you're not playing this in a slow tempo to get this. You're playing this in a slow tempo to get this. To get this, okay? Um, what else? Okay, let's just continue. It kind of the same pattern here from this uh, prelude, oh, better of mine. Again, every a relative downbeat gonna be here, not every three note, but every two note based on our melody here. So it's gonna be a bum, 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 bum. And in this case, again, wrist to the right, elbow to the left, wrist to the left, elbow to the right. So when you're gonna play faster, It feels so good. Again, if you don't move elbow, just let me show you here. I'm just playing in a static position. 
I feel right away here so much tension. I can't even move my fingers, honestly. <laughs> We have a couple of more examples. So octaves. Octaves are kind of a different story. You know, technically, every octave is a new position. So you would need to move elbow on every note here. But again, considering the fact that we're going to play octaves fast, you can do this. It just will lock up your hands more than without playing without any elbow. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of compromise and we're gonna choose again every relative downbeat in this bar and move elbow. So we're gonna move here and pretend this, the rest is one position, which kind of possible. And again, when I'm gonna play faster, all this you know awkwardness will just become smaller, hopefully. So elbow will again guide you all the time. And all right, the last example from the arabesque. You see, we're gonna have here again uh, down a bit here, relative down a bit there. So this is what we're gonna do: move and move, even though it's contrary motion. So when we're gonna speed up. How fast it goes da, 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 like this then all you have to feel is this impulse on your down base where you move your elbow upwards and inwards that's all <laughs> now uh, listen so if we're gonna play for example in slow tempo that really doesn't matter where you move your elbow <laughs> either it's country motion or it's arm beat because I mean who cares you have so much time <laughs> you know you can do whatever you want. So even you can move, you see, what I'm doing here on upbeat, that will not lock up your muscles, so it's fine. But if you start doing this in fast tempo, it's gonna look a bit, I don't want to say jerky, but it's a bit like, um, what the word, you know what I mean, not comfortable at all, instead of this. To play this way. <laughs> okay, next, choosing the first note that goes opposite direction, that goes in opposite direction um, to to the previous note, <laughs> even if this note is on the up beat. Um, so again, couple examples. For example, we have here one position and here we have another position. So somehow it feels simply good when you move your wrist and elbow on the first note that goes to the right, after this to the left. You know, C to the left, D to the right, so the first note was opposite direction and I move my wrist and elbow. And of course, in this case, this movement is going to be always with similar motion. Very nice feeling. And another example is you see this first etude by Chopin. Uh, later I will give you actually another example, like kind of variant of this descending movement, but descending passage, arpeggio, what is it? <laughs> so here, nevertheless, one position, and I'm moving my elbow on the first note that goes, you know, like to the left. So somehow this you know, it gives a very nice impulse, very steady impulse for moving elbow, left, left. So even if you play in fast tempo, you can still feel it because it goes in country motion. And the last is choosing similar pattern in both hands. So if you have similar motion like here, it's very nice to match elbow movement. So if you choose, for example, for right hand on the second note in this position, then do the same with the left hand. Then when you're gonna play in fast tempo, it's very easy to trace, you know, it's very easy to focus on the movement. So when you go, Kind of a rhythmic enjoyment here. <laughs> so you see what I mean. So they go together. 
And the same would do with revolutionary etude. Move together, move together. Even though, okay, you can see here, the, uh, the positions are not really the same because this is one position for the right hand and unfortunately this is this is not the one position for the left hand so the left hand works a little bit like you know one step forward but based on what my left doing I'm making the same pattern with my right hand so even though it's completely like what is it the middle of the position but you know I'm following the higher rule of similar pattern in both hands so I'm just engaging my right hand to whatever my left hand is doing and then when you go faster you just again feel impulse left 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 and it all looks like one stroke and again, the same way it's gonna work, it's gonna work in this etude. My wrist inwards, my elbows outwards. My wrist outwards, my elbows inwards. And again, when I'm gonna play faster, I simply feel this impulse here and here, as you call my pinky and my thumb. And when I need to speed up, I simply speed up the sensation. Especially, you know, pay attention when you make a big, when you need to make a bigger leap, then you kind of need to force yourself to make even bigger and faster movement with your elbows. That's just an additional little tip. <laughs> so now I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step guide to finding positions in the score. So um, first, let's talk about fingering. So find the best fingering to change positions as least as possible. And for study purpose, you can mark each position with a bracket. Again, uh, let me just tell you, <laughs> you don't have to analyze this way every single PC play. Um, you know, our hands are very smart. So as soon as you get the right sensation, as soon as your hands, you know, get the right sensation, uh, they will guide you the next time you're opening a new piece. So you will already kind of intuitively know, you know, when, when I'm sight reading, I'm not, of course, calculating everything while playing. It's Mostly in my, you know, my hand already knows what to do. It, it's kind of like a dog. It can smell, pre-feel everything that is coming, adjusting all the movements. Okay, so after you kind of took care of fingering and you know the positions now, choose the last note of the current position, but check other options as you can find, um, you know, you can find more options more comfortable and effortless to play. So choose similar wrist album movement note, choose the downbeat note, even if it's contrary wrist album note, you know, movement. Choose the first note with another direction, even if it's upbeat when it goes to opposite direction. And with similar both hand pattern, choose similar position change notes. That's basically it. And the rest you just, you know, practice and practice and practice it get it just under your skin so guys what i'm gonna play i'm not gonna i'm not gonna play with any dynamics any articulations just movements wrist and elbow mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, here it should be on the last note. <laughs>
first variant. Second variant. Over here, I just want to say these four bars, I'm taking the top note with my right hand when I play. So that's why the elbow movements are a little bit different. Is faster, let me just show you. <laughs> See, it, it looks very flexible. Okay, I should engage intonation, wait, not to <laughs> miss the notes. <laughs>
make room your tours, of course, to have some room. <laughs> here too much because now I have this almost octave here. about it. 